Hello everyone. In the last video, I talked about modality and cardinality between relationships and specifically asked if you could identify what type of modality and cardinality we could we could gain uh, garner from our ternary relationship down here. Well, if we look at this right here, a user has many permissions for roles. A role has many permissions for users, and a department has many has many permissions for many users, and a user has many permissions for many roles. Now, if we think, are these required? And the answer is no. We can have a department that only has permissions for user for roles and a user that only has permissions uh, for departments. So what we have is actually an optional many relationship for all of these relationships. So let's go ahead and change these right here. And let's go ahead. And that is the answer to our last question. So in this video, I would like to talk about weak entities versus strong entities using the idea of our shady business, ETSU Loans for You, where ETSU, ETSU Loans for You does not require that an individual has a loan to be a customer as part of our business rules. So let's get to talking about our weak entities and strong entities, and more importantly, their definitions. So. A weak entity is any entity that requires a strong entity to exist. Or you could say that the entity is dependent on another. Let's put this in its own line so it's easier to read. And a strong entity is any entity that can exist independently from other entities. So what does that mean? Well, here in, the, here in a little bit, I'm going to explain to you, using our, using our scenario here, exactly what that entails. So let's go ahead and grab an entity here. So at ETSC Loans for You, we are going to define a customer entity and we are also going to define a loan entity. So let's go ahead and give our customer a primary key attribute and we'll call this customer ID. And our customer has a uh, last name. and a first name. Let's add one more attribute and we're, we're, we're shady. We're shady uh, database programmers here so all we care about is their phone number. Ah, one thing I'd like to note that I uh, missed in my last video is that when you define a primary key in ERD you go ahead and you underline it just so we know that it is a primary key. Now let's look at a loan here. So a loan. So when we think about how we take out a loan here, a loan is borrowed by a customer. So let's pull our item down here and say borrows. So and we'll give it a couple of attributes here. So a loan belongs to a customer, right? So let's give it a foreign key of customer ID. It has a total amount for the loan and an interest rate. And let's go ahead and put these guys together with their relationship remove some of the text here
and remove the arrowheads. Now, based on our business rules here, we know that a customer borrows from us and receives a loan. But, a, and I spelled customer wrong, excuse me. But, does a customer borrow, excuse me, does a loan borrow from a customer? And the answer in this relationship is no. So, we can define customer as our strong entity. And our loan as a weak entity. Oops, and I spelled entity twice here. But let's see how we can kind of use cardinality and modality in order to help understand what we're looking at here. So a loan requires one and only one customer in this sense. So we would do we would denote this based on a double slash with our relationship line, but a customer can have many loans, but they're not required based on our business based on our business rules. So this would be a optional many relationship. Let's go ahead and denote that. So this isn't always the case but you can use it to help you understand that often if we have something that is a requirement without it being the same in our relationship it's usually easy to denote a strong and a weak entity out of this relationship. I hope this has all helped you understand weak entities and strong entities. I look forward to talking to you all in the next video. Thanks.